Hello friends and welcome back to the Hall of Craft! I'm back with another video for you guys. So I have made these big chunky rune hammer inspired terrain boards in the past and these things are great. They have a nice carved grid on them. They're big, they're durable, and they look good. We love Runehammer here, and he has brought a lot to the community with this idea. But I think I can add a little bit more to it, and also kind of combine it with some other ideas that I've seen here on YouTube. So my big problem with these boards is that over the years and over my various apartment moves, the corners have gotten quite dinged up, and the XPS foam underneath gets exposed quite easily, kind of compromising your paint job. And that's just to do with the fact that they have these really vulnerable corners to them. So I figured that one thing I could do to instantly upgrade the quality of the Rune Hammer boards is to kind of smush them together and combine them with Professor Dungeon Master's Ultimate Dungeon Terrain, little dungeon pizza as it's known in the community uh, method. I think I can kind of combine those two things to create some much nicer and much more uh, reliable and safe boards for myself. So I think that by combining these two ideas and doing it now as the Alistair of the future, who is a much better crafter than the Alistair of the past, I think I can create myself some nice, beautiful, durable, long-lasting terrain boards. So the plan here is I'm gonna create three boards, each roughly about two foot in diameter, and I'm going to make them double-sided. That way I can have six biomes ready to go whenever I need them. And because my channel kind of functions as a archive of crafting tutorials, I'm not going to smush all of these into one video. I'm going to give each biome its own video and I'm going to put them in a playlist that you can find here in the top right if you're watching this after it's posted. I'm going to put them all there together so that if you need to find a certain biome at a glance, it's right there and you don't need to watch through a 40 minute video to dig for the information you're looking for. So if you want to skip this intro after watching it for the fifth time, I'll make sure that I put bars in the bottom so everything is clearly labeled. For this video, I'm going to be doing the planes board. So to start out with this one, I just take a piece of string, a screw, and a sharpie. And by placing the screw in the middle and wrapping the string around the sharpie, I will draw a circle as big as I can on my two foot by eight foot and two inch thick sheet of blue XPS foam. This stuff is great, you can just get it at the hardware store. And so one of the awesome things about the Rune Hammer train is that it is two inches thick and this foam facilitates that. I know that some versions of the UDT or the Dungeon Pizza go a little thinner, a little bit more uh, flat, but for this it's actually really important that we use the two inch thick because it'll facilitate the double-sided nature of these boards. I would not suggest using the thinner stuff, especially on the swamp or the lava boards. That's right, we're gonna be making a lava board later. Once that's drawn, it's time to cut. For this, I'll just cut as close to the circle as I can with a big knife, and then once I'm part partially through the foam, I'll snap it over my knee. This gives me a much more manageable chunk. Once I have that chunk, I'll take it over to my Proxon and use it to cut off the corners. You could do this with a knife, it'll just take a lot more time and you'll have to be a lot more patient. I have the Proxon, so I use it here because it saves me so much and it gives me a really nice smooth cut. Now it's time to draw the grid. For this, I just use a tape measure to find the center and then a triangle to square it up. From there, you can just mark out all of the inch marks with a pen and it's just a matter of connecting the dots from here on out. You can skip this step if you don't like playing with grids, but on these boards, I find them pretty subtle in the end after all the texturizing and other elements we add to it. And personally, as a DM, I find the grid very helpful on the table to just see things at a quick glance. The last thing I'm gonna do to all of the boards is just take a sanding block and smooth the rough edge that I cut with the procs on. I, because I'm treating these like double-sided boards, I'm treating this edge almost like the base rim on a and I'd like it to be as clean as possible. So getting this to look like a planes board is pretty straightforward. And to start it out, I am just gonna grab my 25 pound dumbbell and start giving this thing the gears. You can smash it up nice and good here. The two inch thick foam absorbs these impacts really well and you would have to try pretty hard to smash all the way through this thing. Smashing it like this gives it a beautiful cracked texture. Once that's finished, I'm gonna use my knife to cut some nice shallow lines along the grid marks that I had marked earlier. This is really gonna help define those lines. After those are cut, I'm going to use my sculpting tool and a pencil and just run them along the lines. I'm okay if this kind of like pulls and tears at the foam a little bit, it's all just extra added texture. 
but it'll help define that grid a little bit more. Now to base coat and protect it. For this, I am just gonna use a mix of uh, Mod Podge and black paint. After that's dry, I am going to grab a sponge and press on a bunch of burnt umber all over this board. This sponge technique gets a lot of awesome texture, but the one trick that you need to keep in mind here is that you need to make sure that the board is totally dry before you switch colors. If it is at all a little bit wet, you're basically gonna start blending the colors together and that sponge, you might as well be painting it with a brush at that point. So after that burnt umber is bone dry, I am going to come in with a cinnamon brown and dab that uh, all over the surface of the board, but not going for 100% coverage. I'm leaving some areas intentionally dark to make sure that some of that other color is showing through below. Next, I will mix some golden brown with my cinnamon brown and use that to further highlight the areas that I'm starting to build up as the brighter areas. Finally, I will start mixing in some vanilla to go a little brighter and just further accentuate those areas even more. After all my paint is dry, I'm gonna come in with a pre-mixed dark green and dark brownish wash and just spread that over the whole thing. This will sink into all the cracks and crevices and make them pop out even more. You can also use a paper towel to soak up any weird pooling areas on the brighter parts of the board. Once that's dry, just brush on a healthy coat of matte varnish to protect it from play. The last thing you need to do to this board is just repaint that rim with more black paint and Mod Podge just to clean up any areas that kind of got uh, touched while working on it. Just make sure there's a nice black rim. The Mod Podge will also help kind of like protect it a little bit better and smooth it out a little bit more. And with that, it's finished. Let's take a look at how it turned out. All right, there we have it, double-sided terrain boards. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. A bit more of a simpler one than I've been doing lately, but sometimes it's nice to go back to the basics. And for me personally, it just feels good to have a nice staple in my collection that I know I can rely on. If you'd like to check out all of these other terrain board building videos, I will put a link to the playlist in the top right. I also have plenty of other terrain crafting and miniature painting videos that you can check out while you wait for the next one. Again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Have a good week, everyone.